If you're a connoisseur of internal combustion engines like me, you've probably noticed that 90% of the engines we put on a pedestal as the greatest of all time were all engineered and designed in the 90s to early 2000s. The LS, the 2J, the modular Ford, Honda engines, and the list goes on and on. This brings up one of the most debated topics in the car community, which is, are older engines actually better? specifically performance oriented engines because as enthusiasts we could care less about factory outputs and mpgs we are more interested in pushing our engines to the ragged edge and sounding good while doing it in this video i will peel back the layers of multiple different engines from different brands show some shortcomings and advantages rank them against each other and decide whether older engines are really better suited for enthusiasts like us who want every ounce of performance and reliability, or should we just go with the times and head to the dealership for the newest and shiniest offerings at 18% interest? Welcome to Explain. First, we need to devise a system to rank these power plants on a 10 point scale that's based in an enthusiast perspective. I'm gonna use a four plus one category for each engine style. That plus one will be cost, which is a deciding factor in the real world. The four main categories are strength, which I factor design characteristics, materials, and well-documented limits of the architecture. Next, we have reliability. If the engine has design flaws that show up in the form of rods being flung out the side of the block, it will show up here. Next is availability, how easy it is to get parts for it or even find them at all. That will be factored here. Last is tuning, how easy or difficult is it to modify them to your liking and is it a difficult vehicle to calibrate? The plus one category that makes things much more interesting is cost. When applied, you will see how different some of these engines stack up against each other and this heavily influences decision making on which platform to go with. So let's dive into the first of many comparisons, the LS and LT based GM small block engines. Without a drawn out history lesson, the LS is an evolution of the Gen 1 engine to small block Chevy engines, sharing the 4.4 inch bore spacing and pushrod valve train layout, but with key differences with a stronger six bolt main caps, the cylinder heads with a shallower valve angle, which promotes higher CFM airflow and light years ahead in computer controls for fueling, timing, idle, spark knock, and just about everything else. The LT evolves on the LS with direct injection fueling, which allows for higher static compression, valve angles even shallower and less shrouding in the intake ports and a higher rocker ratio of 1.8 and a much more advanced torque based engine controls. Now to the meat and potatoes, strength. The LS and LT share almost identical block architecture, but with some advantages going to the LT with gussets around the water jacket and thicker plus one millimeter larger cylinder head bolts. But in general, the rotating assemblies explode around the same levels, 800 wheel horsepower for the LS3 and LT1 and around a thousand wheel for the LT4 and LS9. In reliability, the Achilles heel of both of these is the displacement on demand and active fuel management systems failing over time, resulting in lifter tapping, destroyed camshafts, in some cases ruined engines. It's less common on LS engines since the Corvette based LS1 through LS9 doesn't have DOD, but it's still a well-documented and known issue. In availability, the LS wins hands down, since it's one of the most proliferated engine architectures on the planet. More than 20 different variations make it easy to find, but with some like the LS7 and the LS9, they'll be harder to come by. When it comes to tuning, the LT suffers with a much more complicated ECU architecture, which has a harsher learning curve and should be left to tuners who only specialize in torque model tuning. In fact, some of the discussions of LT engines being weaker internally when they first came around in 2014 was predicated on inexperienced tuners blowing up cars and blaming the architecture and not their skill set. The LS is simpler without sacrificing power potential and the aftermarket is probably the most developed, rivaling the 2JZ. 
when you factor in pricing to acquire and build being higher on the LT since its direct injection system gets costly to modify and LS engines can be found in junkyards just collecting dust, the LS wins out by around five points. Not necessarily is it a 10 in any category, but it's decent in many areas. And while it may be boring and it doesn't catch the eye as much, it works. This next comparison is one that comes up in debate a lot within the modular Ford community. And that's specifically the 03 to 04 Terminator Cobra's power plant versus the modern Coyote variants. The Terminator was essentially a response to GM's F bodies beating the piss out of Mustangs throughout 98 to 2002. SVT rushed to market a new engine based on the 4.6 modular architecture, but outsourced engine components to the aftermarket like Manly for the connecting rods, American Racing products for the bolts, and Zollner for the forged pistons. What you got was an insanely strong engine that was corked shut by a pretty weak factory supercharger. The Coyote, however, is a similar story. Throughout 2005 to 2009, there was really no competition from GM in the entry-level pony car segment, and the GT500 was a pretty expensive flagship model bought by the jean shorts and New Balance crowd. But the reintroduction of the Camaro in 2010 with its 426 horsepower LS3 made Ford go back to the drawing board, ditch the 4.6 liter three valve in the GT for a five liter dual over a cam V8 called the Coyote. It boasted twin independent variable cam timing, a 7,000 RPM redline, and 412 horsepower, which is more than what the Terminator made, but while being naturally aspirated. And after four generations of refinement, it's undeniable how much potential they bring to the table. When matching these two legendary engines from Ford, there's some immediate advantages in the department of strength to the Terminator since it's literally a built iron block engine from the factory, while Coyotes, especially the Gen 1 Coyotes, the connecting rods are the wink link in this comparison, which was resolved in the Roadrunner and Gen 2 and Gen 3 Coyotes. In the realm of reliability, the Terminator is simpler. Even though they both are dual overhead cam, the addition of cam phasing and oil pump gears prone to breakage when boosting the Coyote has a Terminator edge out ever so slightly. When it comes to availability though, the Coyote wins with no debate. You have four different generations and truck and car variants, not including the Voodoo and Predator. The Coyote is a much easier to acquire and maintain versus a two year model engine in the highest trim of Mustang at the time. Tuning would also have to go to the Coyote. The Coyote tuning world consists of plenty companies who offer vetted tunes for any build you can think of, and the ECU themselves are pretty powerful compared to the Terminator's 20-year-old processors that can't handle above 7,500 RPM or more red lines. Which even though the Coyote is more expensive than your typical LS other than like the LS7 and LS9, the Terminator being so rare, so sought after and such a rich history behind it, the engines fetch a nice premium. And this ties up the Coyote and Terminator. The Coyote's availability, well-supported tuning community and still decently attainable to build makes them equals according to this. And I can already tell this will get a lot of backlash, but it is what it is. In this next comparison, we have two engines that don't share the same manufacturer, but share the same application, and that's the Supra. The Mark IV's 2JZ GTE was an engine based on the original Yamaha developed 1JZ, but with a larger three liter displacement and ditching those parallel twin turbos for more advanced for the era sequential twin turbo system. It was insanely overbuilt for the 320 horsepower it was rated at and has seen four digit horsepower on the factory rotating assembly. The Mark V Supra follows the same turbo inline six rear wheel drive coupe format, but with a BMW engine and chassis, basically a reskinned BMW Z4 M40i with some tweaks. Regardless of the way that you feel about BMW heavily influencing the Mark V, the B58 TU engine is exceptional in its own right and was reliable enough where Toyota approved of its use in the Supra. When comparing the strength of both of these engines, they are pretty close. Both feature a closed deck engine block, a forged crankshaft, and forged connecting rods with hyper eutectic pistons, but the 2JZ edges out with its burly iron block and has seen four digit wheel horsepower on the stock bottom end. 
It's worthy of note though that the B58TU has a much wider power band and the cylinder head flows much better than the 2JZ. In the case of reliability, the 2JZ is a product of 90s Toyota overbuilding and simplicity, which in the case of the 2JZ, there's not a lot to go wrong other than age-related issues from a 30-plus year old platform, like timing belts, oil pump seals, leaking gaskets, and the like. The B58TU is still relatively new, so age issues haven't shown up as much, but since it's much more complicated as an engine, they may experience rare but possible electric water pump issues and crankcase ventilation valve failing, causing smoky startups and loss of power. If this video was made 10 years ago, the availability of a 2JZ GTE would have it score near a seven or eight. But in 2023, they are harder and harder to find. More expensive and most donor cars like the Aristo or wrecked IS300s and GS300s have been plucked. The B58 edges out since you can still buy them brand spanking new while every JZ is going to be a third or fourth owner engine. When it comes to tuning, both have plenty of companies supporting them. The 2JZ has the advantage since it's been around for 30 years and everything from billet blocks to stroker kits to standalone ECUs are readily available. The B58 is also easier to go fast. You're bolt-ons away from a 10 second car in the quarter mile that maintains the same road manners as stock. Since the 2JZ is supported much more intensely than the B58, it edges out ever so slightly as well. Finally, cost. Like I said before, 10 years ago, an Aristo pullout was $2,500 shipped to your door. Now it's three times as much. The B58 is not cheaper either, since it's a premium option BMW engine, which brand new from BMW retails over $20,000. And even though it's cheaper to go fast, you still have to have a 40i or a Supra to get in one. So equally, they both need you to pay to play. The 2JZ GTE's overwhelming strength and tuning aftermarket give it a lead, but the B58, I believe, in the real world of built daily driven machines is the winner in that space. From these comparisons, let's answer some obvious questions. Why the f does the LS rank over the almighty 2JZ? Well, that's simply the LS ranking in these categories consistently. The 2JZ suffers in availability and cost on average. And if the comparison was done 10 years ago, cost and availability would rank much higher. Next, why does the Coyote and Terminator equal each other when the Coyote has been seven seconds in the quarter mile on the stock unopened engine? Simply because I don't factor in quarter mile time since it skews data by a lot. All it takes is one brave, deep pocketed individual to make a glory run and this doesn't reflect into real world limits. The original purpose of this comparison is to see if older engines are better than new ones with an enthusiast perspective in mind. And this is true in certain situations like the LS versus the LT debate, the LS's lower cost of entry and more developed aftermarket gives it an advantage. The 2JZ and B58 can be argued aren't comparable because age differences, but the older and simpler 2JZ outranks in strength and tuning ability a big factor to enthusiasts like myself. In the Coyote versus Terminator debate, it's harder to say the strength of the Terminator couldn't outweigh its high cost and low availability and tuning troubles compared to the Coyote. The main takeaway is that older engines may suit you better depending on what you value. If MPGs and weight is a concern, go with the newest offerings. But if a heavier, stronger iron block and simplicity is more your forte, then an older engine architecture will better suit your needs. Let me know what you agree with and what you don't agree with. And there definitely will be a part two of this with more engines and more debate.